Hello, folks, and welcome to another edition of the Bill Crane Report. My good friend Wayne Weiss is right here with me to keep me on the straight and narrow. That's right. <clears throat> see what the devil's going on. Um, got a full boat of stuff to talk about, so um, I think I'll start with uh, a little quiz for uh, Dwayne. So, what would you rather be, a fox or a wolf? <laughs> A wolf, they were running a pack. That's right, yeah. That's the difference. The fox is yeah, they're all by themselves. Yeah. Well, you got them damn hounds chasing you every once in yeah, a while. Yeah, that's not no fun there. What would you rather have, a butler or a maid? What kind of maid? <laughs> Let your imagination run uh, away with yourself. Butler. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How political of you. Well, see, I'm old now. <laughs> there was, there was a time when I said maid, but now I'm thinking, eh, he could do some yard work. He can yeah. fix, you know, change light bulbs. He can do Shuffle some work. Snow. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You ain't got to yeah. get too much out of a little maid in the French. You've been little... thinking about us. Yeah, oh, yeah. Would you rather watch cars racing or horses racing? If I'm watching races to race, I want to watch the cards. If I'm betting, I want the horses. <laughs> okay. Uh, would you rather live in Sweden or in Norway? Sweden. Yeah. Some of the most beautiful women in the world. Would you rather work night shifts or be unemployed? Oh, night shifts. I I actually work nights. I did too. And I, I, I liked it. Yeah. You're all by yourself. No, well, I, I was in a candy it, factory, but it seemed to go yeah. a lot faster. Yeah. Because there was no nothing going on outside, and it was dark, and you just... Usually there's no, uh, not a whole bunch of supervisors dropping yeah. around watching. I mean, there's one guy, the night manager, but other than that. Uh, would you rather eat pie or cake? Pie. Okay. I'm ambivalent on that one, I. I like carrot cake. I'd probably go for the cake. Would you rather spend one week in the woods or one night on a beach? That's a question that's hard to answer. Now, if it's one night in the woods with no shelter, just no. But I would take the night on the beach in that case. It's one week in the woods. Yeah, I know. Or one night at the beach. One night at the beach. One night at the beach. I'd rather be in the woods. Um, would you rather have... <laughs> this is beautiful. Would you rather have stock white hair or glowing yellow hair? Right now, white. Okay. Would you rather have unlimited sushi or unlimited pasta? Oh, pasta. I cannot understand sushi. No. Oh. I, I don't like it, and I can't understand people actually eating I had raw one bite fish. of sushi Me too. I will, once. I've tried a couple times on, on urging from kids. Oh, Dad, Grandpa, you got to try this. Oh, no. God, no. Just mm. try one bite. And that one bite, I damn near threw up. Yep. Ugh, awful. Would you rather go to every concert or every musical that appears, I guess, locally? Actually, I'd rather go to the musicals. Okay. Uh, I'd go to the concert, I think, but it's a narrow choice mm -hmm. there. Would you give up reading or television? Oh, or tele yeah. television. Give up the internet or reading for a year? Internet. Yep. Uh, would you give up restaurants or the internet for a year? Restaurants. Yeah, me too. Uh, would you give up sausage or bacon for a year? Oh, come on now. That's, that's, <laughs> not, that's cruel. <laughs> 
Oh, golly. I would give up the bacon, I think. Yeah, me too. All right. Well, we've got over that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the night on the beach. Yep. Oh. I got to tell a story. Okay. Here. I'm probably going to get guff from it, but we used to go to Jersey Shore with another couple that lived in Jersey. They didn't live down on the Jersey Shore, but they lived out outside of New York there in Upper Saddle River. And they would rent a place for a month down in Ship's Bottom, I think it was the name of it. Okay. Right across the bay from Atlantic City, there's kind of a peninsula sticking out. And it was very nice. I mean, the sand dunes and the water and everything else. Somebody who was related close to me at that time, and still is, thought it would be really nice. And their beaches are open at night, too. You don't have to, not like around here, you get kicked off. She said, let's take a blanket and go sit down on the beach tonight when it's nice and dark and the water's falling in. It was, it was a beautiful night. The stars are out and stuff. I said, no, Christ, I don't want to get all sand. Oh, come on, you you old poop. You don't want to do nothing. Oh, oh. So I, they, that's just language that is yeah, taught to women that they use. I think meetings. so. So I, I gave in. So we threw some beers and I think a bottle of wine and a cooler and some blanket and some potato chips and pretzels and all kinds of snacks. Off we go. We climb over the dunes, go down on the beach. We're sitting there. I can hear rustling every once in a while. What the hell is that? I thought, seagulls aren't flying now. Well, I had a little pen light. I turned that pen, this is about an hour after we've been there. I turned that pen light on. There's a million skunks on that beach digging in the sand looking for stuff that people had food and stuff, you know, from the day. Well, she sees those skunks. I, you know, wait a minute, you're going to carry some of this. She's heading up over the dunes already. She's not waiting for nothing. But that was the last time she ever said, let's have a romantic night down on the beach. Uh, there, that was great. I, I, I can't, there had to be 30 skunks that we could see. Yeah. You know, one there, one there, one there. I don't know where too, they all come from. There's a bunch of stuff, too, in the water. You know, yeah. pieces of clam and yep. uh, junk like that. Uh, they were digging in the dirt. They were, they, they were oh, finding okay. potato chips and you know, bread crusts and everything. And, oh. Well, any idea of romance certainly went down the tubes, huh? That, that, that killed it. <laughs> I wasn't too crazy about it in the first place. I don't like getting full of sand. You know what? Going to the beach and getting all sanded up. That's right. Is To me, I'd rather get poked in the eye with a sharp stick. Yep, me too. Uh, th those days are gone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Last couple times I went to the beach, I didn't take my shoes off. Yeah, that's a wise move. Yeah, I said, well, I'm careful. I don't want to get sand in my shoes. That's it. Exactly. She said, well, why didn't you wear shorts and black, long black socks and black shoes, black dress shoes then? I said, well, maybe next time I will. They're very helpful. I guess I am. Wives, aren't they? Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. Well, I was having a talk with my sister Cheryl this morning. Mm hmm And I said, well, we have quite a decision tonight, don't we? And she said, and what's that? I said, what to watch on TV? Oh, yeah. That's right. uh, are we going to watch the State of the Union? Or are we going to watch... Swamp people. And she said, Ah, uh, I think I'll just go to bed early. What time is uh, Swamp, or not Swamp, uh, State of the Union? Nine, I think, isn't it? Or uh, is it eight? Uh, if it's eight, we won't watch it until yeah. nine. Yeah. Because young Sheldon's on at eight. Oh, yeah. And this is then a lot. She, then she likes to see uh, ghosts after that. Okay. Um, I didn't like that at first, but it kind of grew on you. Uh, this is the last year for uh, yeah, from young Sheldon. Sheldon, yeah. May, the paper said May 26th is going to be the last. Yeah. It, now, I haven't watched it for a long time. Is he grown up now? Oh, God, yeah. You don't look anything like you did when that series first started. And he's gotten nasty. 
sort of like he is in Snarky. Sheldon. Yeah, yeah. That, that he got, that's where he's starting to get that snarkiness. The comedy writer that wrote those shows, he was very talented. You are not kidding how, how they could progress time wise yeah. too, and, and, yeah. and keep it all in in sync. And he did it backwards. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, he started with him as but, an adult and. The, then wrote about the, him as a child. The series is going to continue, but not as young Sheldon. It's going to pro continue with Georgie, his bro older brother, who, you know, has got a baby now with a, his girlfriend. How old are you? I'm sure they're going, to get, they're going to get married, and they're going to continue on the story oh, of the okay. Coopers. Huh. Well, um, I think Susie's going to watch The State of the Union. And I'm going to go upstairs and watch Swamp People. If I, I think if I watch State of the Union, she'll do Sudoku's or crossword puzzles. Yeah. She's just not going to. She won't pay attention to it. So the State of the Union is tonight, and from what I gathered from Fox this morning, the people they had on the White House people, especially those reporters, it's going to be taxes, taxes, taxes. Ooh. He is going to raise corporate taxes. He's going to propose to go to 28%. I mean, why don't we just slam the hell out of business, you know? Oh, no. And, and we're going to pay it. Oh, yeah, of course we do. The, the middle class is going to take it to the hardest of there's all. No, there's no cost in business that's not passed on, or you, right. business wouldn't be in business. Um, and no tax breaks. For companies that pay employees over one million dollars. Now, what he means by tax breaks, uh, I'm not sure. sure. This is, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder here. I think, as far as this is concerned, and they had a couple of other throwaway lines too about taxes. They were going to do things on. Well, I think I hope they. Uh, well, the networks won't. You can't, that's that's, that's too, asking too much. But I mean, any any of the media takes the what it is for what it is, not to see. Did you hear what he said? Oh, he 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 missed that word, or he he looked away. He he made a a presentation error. They're all waiting for him to make a mistake. Well, that's not the whole purpose of the thing. No, but I think some people would argue that this puts an exclamation point on the fact that he is probably not up to the job. We all know that. That's the thing. There's not a person in the country that doesn't aware of that now. Mm. And this week, I saw something that was kind of eye-opening. They compared... Biden and Trump. Trump has been lately stumbling like Biden in some really big ones, but they don't report them like they do. If Biden makes a small stump, Trump or a stumble, it's on all the news. Trump had made some guy that he just stood there and he just was out of left field. I think, and they didn't even bother to report him. Yeah, I, I think that the, the, the comparison there is kind of unfair. Because Biden is programmed, totally yeah. programmed, and he's got that cheat sheet in his left hand. You're right. Uh, yeah. Where Trump says, I'll talk to anybody, anywhere, anybody about yeah, anything you want to talk that's about. That's where he's getting in trouble. Yeah. When he I, gets off that teleprompter, if he starts ad-libbing, he, he, he's, he's, work, he's yeah, terrible but, now. But when he was president, he used to do the walk. Mm -hmm. From uh, the White House to the helicopter, yeah. well, they had the line up, and he would stop and talk to every one of he those was, reporters. He was a lot more lucid than that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tend to agree with you in this respect. I think he's wound tighter now. Well, look at the stuff that's happening oh, in yeah. his life, you know? Well, look what they're trying to do to him. Um. Not that some of it isn't of his own Our making. Course, yeah. I think he walked into that puddle himself. Yeah, but um, I, it's it's going to be interesting, I think, tonight. 
So no. interesting. I'm not going to watch it. I'm going to watch Swamp People. You'll see it 10 times tomorrow on the news. Oh, oh it'll, it'll be wall-to-wall -wall yeah. coverage. But what I hope, this is not what's going to happen. Okay? Yeah. But this is what Billy would have happen, is the Biden culture should be examined tonight. We have a drug epidemic in this country. We have open borders in this country. We have a shoplifting epidemic with companies closing their doors and going out of business. We have goods under lock and key because we refuse to punish thieves. We have a homeless crisis fueled by drugs, alcohol abuse, and the mentally ill. We are failing to support law enforcement. And when this wall of protection crumbles, it'll be chaos. We'll all have to be armed. We have colleges and universities becoming hotbeds of anti-Semitism. What effect does this hatred have on our lives? The animals and the thugs will dominate the streets in our lives. They're learning how to do it in colleges, shouting down other people. Although I see this today, colleges are announcing they're starting to go towards neutral neutrality. They're seeing the uh, money flow. That's right. The, the big down. donors are saying, hey, you keep that up. You're not getting yeah. my money. That's right. God that's, help that's us. That's the only thing they'll listen to, too. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Money makes the world mm -hmm. go round. Yep. <gasps> So how President Biden puts a shine on this turd that he's created will be interesting to watch. By the way, I did not mention our president owns involvement in two wars, Ukraine and Israel versus Hamas, and has a festering sore, which is Taiwan, that he's doing nothing about, all of which was caused by a feckless foreign policy which resembles his seller policy. We certainly hope he continues to emphasize tonight, we will stay with Ukraine. Do not, I hope he does not fall to some of those maggots that's in the damn Congress that want to throw him to the wolves for a political gain. It's unconscionable to do that. It is. We have got now we have splinters. Before we had liberals and conservatives. Mm -hmm. And then we had the so wanderers in the middle. Yep. And, and, and wander it's, over to each this side, side wander was, over was to that one side. One side over here. Now these sides have split off into, into it's like, subgroups. It's like France and Italy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, 11 yeah, exactly. political style. Exactly. Oh, well, I have to make a deal with this group. I definitely want that yep. group. Uh, I hope when the dust clears that Trump will get his wandering group under control. Yeah. I think he will. I think he's smart enough to realize he has to. Well, they come back and bite him otherwise. Oh, they, they will ruin his presidency. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, by the way, uh, just as an aside, I was watching Jean, uh, Karine Jean-Pierre the other day. Okay. And she repeated her mantra about Biden. Yeah. She said, I can't keep up with him. He's in the middle of this. He's in the middle of that. He says, oh, no to this. Oh, yes to that. Explains to people why they're wrong. Explains to people why they're right and they should continue. He is a perpetual motion machine. Well, that, okay, lines her up for the biggest liar of the world. Because there are other aides that leak out, well, as soon as he does something, he has to have a two-hour lie down. Uh, it's, uh, there's naps, uh, there's ice cream breaks. Um, it, <clears throat> I don't know. It, it, but I don't, for her yeah. to do this, and she's going to rationalize this. When this oh, is yeah, over, absolutely. But by saying I was a team player, mm -hmm. I was told what to do. I I just quit putting my stock in all that kind of crap yeah. anymore, yeah. because you got 
MSNBC saying one thing, you got Fox saying something else, and Fox has gotten so weird. If you start, I, I quit watching. I used to watch him 100 percent, but then Tucker Carlson, he he just turned me right off on that group. Well, and now even some of them now are they're they're they're, they're just slipping on stuff, and then MSNBC the same thing. You can't watch either one of them anymore, hardly. Because Tucker's a He'd gone out to pasture. Oh, well, yeah, well, he's out in the field now someplace. Yeah, and uh, but you're right. Uh, but um, you know what's interesting is, uh, oh, cheapest creepers. I'll find it here in a minute. But um, they asked, oh, here it is. No, it's not. Um, Oh, dear me. Well, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it. Here it is. <clears throat> Sean Hannity has calmed down mm -hmm. a great deal. He, he said something the other night that uh, I thought was great. Uh, he was asked what if he were running for president, what was his platform look like? Oh, he said, oh, he said, very simple, four words, God, faith, family, and country. Okay. Kind of words I like to hear. Now, as part of my little notepad here, I have another little thing on this notepad here. One of the great mysteries of life. Why did the kamikaze pilots wear helmets? <laughs> Good point. Keep their ears warm. I don't know. <laughs> well, we're going to get to the bottom of that. Um, you know, I never thought of that. I read it someplace. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, like, why do you have an interstate in Hawaii? <laughs> That's always a good one, too. Yeah, you know, just another. I, I have the last few weeks decided that I'm not going to get really involved too much in politics and stuff because you can't do anything about it. I said, no, hey. but you like to think that you're going to be informed. Informed, yeah, but I'm not getting upset over it anymore. I, I don't care what they do because unless they can write Well, there's me, nothing we can do about nothing it. Nothing we can do about it, and they're not writing me a big check anyway. No. So I'm not going to be like the Boston City Council and... and Voting on whether Red China should have been lit. They actually, at one time, were debating for over a week, and this was back years ago, whether Red China should be let into the United Nations or not. Well, Good. You know Lord. what? Not, you, you and know now what? they're working about somebody else with the uh, Gaza Strip. Well, you've got nothing to do with that. Do you know what is an interesting? Now, supposing, now I'm, let's pretend that. You've gone totally and completely brain dead. Okay. All right. Maybe. And I you're am. maybe a couple of steps away from putting a bullet in your head. Yep. Try watching the uh, now Fox Selectman's meetings. Oh my us. God! I can imagine. They spent four straight sessions. Now, not the whole session, mm -hmm. but they kept an argument going, a discussion going, for four straight weeks. About what? Road signs. Oh. Do we like the kind that go like yeah, this? Yeah, oh my God. Do we like the kind that go like that? What color should it be? And I love it, too, when they do this. Well, let me think about this. And you know you say to yourself, oh, if a lightning bolt hits, in the meantime, we got potholes yeah. that you can bury your car in. We have an aging former town hall on Main Street. That's that, empty, huh? That is a disgrace. That the only thing it would be good for would be a fire for training. Well, the raccoons and, and the rats got to have some place to live. <sighs> Man alive. There's a lot of things that could be done. Yeah. One of my pet peeves is the gravestones. They need to be cleaned occasionally. What would be better? Just to leave them with all the corrosion or growths all over them? Or to hire like three kids, teenagers, mm -hmm. 
and turn them loose with vinegar and water and rags for the summer mm -hmm. and let them do the job and clean them up. We got three or four graveyards too, too in simple. our park. We'd have to put it out a bid or multi bids to the, some multi company someplace and then debate the bids. Have to be a minority country. Oh, I absolutely has to have the, fit all these uh, parameters. Government, uh, parameters. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. And and then of course the union would say, well, wait a minute now, you know this is really our job. Well, why don't you do it? Well, we don't have enough time. You got to hire more people. Yeah. Yeah. That. Uh, uh, well, I have a couple of other. On this other sheet, Winston Churchill. This mm -hmm. is great. I had never read this before. An appeaser is someone who feeds a crocodile, hoping it will eat him last. Yeah. He had a million of those. He had a, <laughs> there's a whole book of that. Yeah. yeah it is. Uh, and mm -hmm. I have it. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it in there, but that doesn't mean it's not there. Um, by the way, a couple of other things. Getting paid under the table. Now, do these people that get paid under the table really have to get under a table to get paid? I don't think so. But you never know. Okay. You, that's where did a, that come from? Paid under the table. Uh, uh, you got me. Um, I, Are you? I, I believe it probably. I don't know. I don't know. Now, I, I've I've heard this more than one people, more, more than one person, and the first time I ever heard it was from my uh, interpreter in Vietnam, and her name was Linda. That wasn't her real name, but that's what she went by. But she said she'd say, "What does that mean?" She said, it, "It makes no sense. Why do you say that, or why do people say that?" Another one was my brother-in-law's wife. She's Chinese, not. It's another different, I got hooks to Chinese here every which way. But uh, she too, when she was, you know, trying to polish her English, yeah. she'd see, what the, uh, look a gift horse in the mouth. And I could explain that one. But she said, what's it got to do with a horse in the horse's mouth? And I explained, well, as horse get older, he, they grow he, teeth yeah. that they don't have. It's younger and... If somebody's giving you a horse, don't say, well, this thing's old. Don't be looking at his mouth to see how old it is. But there's some of the others that just don't make any sense. I ran into it in Germany. Mm -hmm. they, they said, why do you talk like that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other, another thing I've noticed. Uh, by the way, folks, I, I write down the stupid stuff as it comes to me. So there's no sense or reason to any of this stuff. But... <clears throat> Do you recall your drinking days? Oh, yeah. One of the things that astounded me for a long time was guys would come into a bar. Now, they don't do this as much anymore because you don't drink in bars much anymore because you can't afford to get stopped for uh, drinking and driving. But how many times have you gone into a bar and been sitting there, have a guy come in and go, I'll have a couple of beers or something. What possesses guys to want to put their keys on the bar? I don't know. I've seen that myself. Yeah. I'd be end, I'd end up losing them. I'd be forgetting. Or have them, them stolen yeah. and have somebody go out there and go beep, beep, beep until they figured out what car it was and yep. take it. Yeah. But I was astounded by this. And also, a few guys would pull their wallet out and put it on the bar. Uh, How about I, the guys that got the, the piton type things, and they must have a 200 keys hanging on that thing. What are all those keys for? How about the ones with the key chains? That's the one, yeah. Yeah, and that's uh, what you mean. And yeah. they hook them on, and there is about uh, 45 keys on yeah. there, and probably two of them he knows what they are, and the other 30 Usually all he has to his, so. Usually all he has to his name is that what, that. Keychain and, and tattoos. Yeah, yeah. I, I, they're not all locked up. No, that I not. think is the answer to a lot of these things. 
Now, sports in brief. Oh, wow. Go ahead. Would you um, care to give me some thoughts on the Patriots quarterback quandary? There are a group in the front office that are pushing for the new general manager to go and try to sign Baker Mayfield as a free agent. Yep. Now, you got to remember, that could possibly uh, go awry because that is the guy that um, Belichick wanted to draft. That is who he was in love with, was Baker Mayfield, and they didn't do it. So if you went and uh, signed Baker Mayfield now, uh, you know, too many people might say, oh, see, but Belichick was right. But they're trying to mm -hmm. have a, a, they're erasing the blackboard. There are actually some medium to medium plus quarterbacks available right now. Yeah, they say that the number one is very athletic, but would probably be the worst choice. Russell. Now, what all that, you know, these guys study up what kind mm -hmm. of underwear these guys wear yeah. and what kind of toothpaste they use and all that stuff. So, who knows? Did but, you happen to see the, speaking of sports, the Celtics uh, golden... Uh, the blowout? Yeah. Yeah, I watched the whole thing. That was some game. I It was like the ball was on a string. Okay. I said, they can't miss. They had radar in the ball, yeah. I think. Even the guys on the bench started laughing after yeah. a while. You know, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. They had the close-ups of the guys. when They kept throwing up these unbelievable yeah. shots. And that guy's on the bench are hysterical. Yeah. But they, that, was, uh, that was quite a game. Uh, but to go back to the quarterback situation, yeah. so we've got three potential number ones. Okay. Who do you or see? Or none of the above. Okay. Who do you see? I'd go for Baker Mayfield. I would too. I like him. Yes. He's I got like a him. strong arm. Yeah. And that was a breakout year he had last year. He finally grew up last year. Yeah. He's got, he's got a lot of play sense too. He can pull the ball down and run it if he mm -hmm. has to also. Uh, or, now, there's another way I think I would proceed, and that is to trade down. We need offensive linemen. Mm -hmm. We need tight ends. We don't have a tight end under contract. Uh, we need a pass receiver. And we need a running back that can catch the ball out of the backfield. Yep. So, if you trade down, you should be able to get three or four draft choices for the number three slot. Mm -hmm. Now, something like maybe 18th in the first round, or maybe out of the first round altogether, and get three or four in uh, second round and the top of the third round and get an offensive lineman or get somebody that has slipped, a running back that can catch the ball. Running backs uh, are not high draft choices anymore. Mm -hmm. There's too many of them out there, yeah. and um, a lot of them are carbon copies of the other. 6'1", 211, can run, doesn't catch the ball particularly well. Yeah, I mean, you can have your choice of all of them. So, you know, I think I would drop down and look for a lineman, a tight end, and a wide receiver. But it'll be interesting to see what they do. Yeah, because the ball's in Mayo's court now. Yeah, excellent. You're absolutely right. Literally. It is indeed. <clears throat> He's been given the keys. Mm-hmm. To the uh, front office. Did you see the uh, Dartmouth basketball team article? No. They voted to unionize. Oh, yes, I saw that. Yes. 
Hey, uh, Dartmouth basketball votes to unionize. Oh, come on. The, yeah, the, this college athletics, I mean, give me a break. You know that there's some of them, some of the athletes in college on that NIL, name, image, and likeness, are making more, hell of a lot more than the coach. And they, they're getting that attitude, well, I let me go 10 times what you make, so don't tell me what to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I won the Heisman Trophy. Yeah. Yeah, what have you got lately, Coach? This one here. They want to be paid $20 an hour. That's for everything. That's travel, that's practice, that's anything to do with basketball. So 800 bucks a week. Yeah, they'll give them about $10,000, at least $10,000 a season. Also, they want complete paid medical, full medical, and whatever other union in that school is getting now. Now, here we're. Meanwhile, they're a 5 and 21 record yeah. team. They're last place in the Ivy League, but Mary Kay. Mary Kay Henry, the international president of SEIU, whatever the hell that's the union, said that the green, Big Green will go down as one of the greatest te basketball teams in history because they challenge the exploitation of student athletes. Now, I always thought the union idea was you hire a union shop or a union worker, they will give you the best quality of stuff that you can give. You hire an electrician, the job's going to be done right. You hire a union plumber, the job's going to be done right. 5 and 21, it's not getting the job done. Do you know what university was the last university established by the British Crown? Maybe Harvard. Dartmouth. Dartmouth, okay. I was going to save that one for trivia. Yep. But there is nobody that would get that. So what's the sense? You know, I mm -hmm. try with trivia to say to myself, I want questions that a third or a half of the people are going to get. Yeah, something that, something's attainable. Yeah. 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 I mean, to come up with obscure things like uh, uh, what kind of a Operating instrument I think use for if they want to, if they want to unionize and their game is five and twenty one, well, it's a basketball That's right. team. Yeah, you're not getting the job done. Tough. Huh. Well, out of the union. Yep. Yeah. What happens when they decide to cut players? I don't know. They ever going to have a, a strike? Grievance process? Yeah, they'll strike. It's but, crazy. It's just Bill. It's just plain nuts. It is. You know what? We have become. Well, well what's do, what we've done is we have taken all the mental cases that used to be taken care of in our mental hospitals and we've put them out in society and now they're banded together and they're running the whole damn show That's right. out there. You're right. I mean, it's nuts what they're doing with law enforcement, these judges. Look at the Boston City Council. Oh. If that isn't the biggest collection of clowns ever, and they stand up there and they they look like uh, the Supreme Court for heaven's yep. sakes, they Chowder. pretend they do something, and they get paid decent money, hundred and seven or hundred nine thousand dollars. Well, there's all kinds of perks there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Um. It the uh. Celtics, uh, in another world, however, there is a chink in the armor, and that is Porzingis is always sitting out a game or two, banged up, sore, something real or pesky. Uh, reminds me of Bill Walton, great, yeah. great basketball player yeah, right. with lousy feet. Mm -hmm. I yeah, mean, he was breaking something. the bones in his feet all the time. And and Pusingas is another extraordinarily tall, slender guy. Yep. Was um, he 7'5"? 
Uh, so, yeah, something like yeah. that, yeah. Um, but he can shoot the uh, three. Oh, I know. He's oh. not clumsy either. Yeah. So y this Celtics team has got to keep Pasingas healthy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're, 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 they're a strong team. There's oh. no question about it. No, I'm uh, unbelievable team. Uh, and by the way, the when Bill Walton played those, I think it was two years with Larry Bird mm -hmm. yep. and the Chief and Kevin McHale, that was the greatest team oh, they I think I ever saw. They were fun to watch. Oh, and Bill Walton could run the court. There's not a big man that could keep within six paces of him. I mean, they had so many weapons on that team. Um, and the Bruins, dull, uninspiring, mm -hmm. skate-and-shoot outfit. No muscle, no physical play. And as far as I'm concerned, the coach should be fired. He can't seem to build a fire under the bunch. Yeah, I, In fact, I, I, that, that, that team is nowhere near what they... No. Nope. And for the right. first time in my lifetime, I'm not watching the games. I do, however, cheat, and I watch any, uh, NHL.com the next morning, and I watch the 10-minute okay, yeah. highlights. Uh, the Red Sox. About the most positive thing uh, out of spring training is the news that they are going to be serving 25-ounce cups of draft beer at the games. Well. And... 25-ounce cans of beer at the games. We're getting in line with the rest of them. Well, I think John Henry, uh, who is the financial brains behind it all, happened to see the, pro, uh, the profit margin profit structure, on yeah. the big cups. He <laughs> said, uh, boys, start pumping this stuff out. Yeah, because you got a, a, a large... Sale, yeah, immediately, yeah, yeah. because uh, uh, we're gonna really be crappy this year, and the fans aren't gonna come. But if we get them half blasted, they'll come back for more. Yeah, the writers are all saying you better prepare yourself for bottom again. Yeah, the, in fact, the uh, headlines uh, in uh, the Wall Street Journal today, oh, in really? this, uh, that section at the end, the, does the disaster of the Boston Red Sox is real or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, I, I used to never like Shaughnessy, but that lately is, his, well, he's on vacation right now, but lately he's been a, very logical. Yes, um, he's mellowing. Yeah, he has. Um, he too said that uh, Henry is no longer, he's not a Red Sox guy anymore. Nope. He's a Fenway sports group guy. No matter what it is, what's the bottom line? He is building the empire. And hmm. at some point in time, that's going to go public. He's going to sell the stock, yeah. and he will then retire someplace uh, and uh, while away the hours. Yeah, because they're looking at stuff that just, you know, they got, now they got, of course, baseball. They got soccer. They got the Manchester United. They got NASCAR hooked in with Joe Gibbs and hockey. They got hockey. the Pittsburgh Penguins. That's right. Um, um, they're lo looking at a, a rugby t outfit. Uh, they, they're just trying to pull all these sports conglomerate in together. Plus NASA, mm -hmm. which is a yeah. cash cow. Oh my God! I mean. You know, the uh, one, the best thing about Nesson is we'll always be able to watch it for free. It's not going to go on any streaming because John Henry is making so much money yeah. with the Nesson network. He's got Nesson on um, programs, uh, uh, programs, on uh, c companies in Oregon. In Canada, or in uh, Arizona. Mm -hmm. In fact, he's got uh, Nesson is on a powerhouse uh, TV station in Arizona. That okay. they, 
that is viewed in New Mexico, uh, te West Texas, uh, and uh, Nevada. It covers the whole thing, uh, the, their cable network. Interesting that you should mention that. Uh, I don't want to credit somebody that didn't didn't write it, but I think it was I think it was Shaughnessy that said, "You best get used to not sitting down and just turn the TV on and watch a sporting event, because the writing's on the wall that you're going to see less and less things on Channel Four or Channel Five. You want a football game today? You Paramount Plus? Are you ESPN Plus? Or are you?" Peacock or which streaming? Because yep. if you want to watch this one, you're going to have to buy that streaming. If you want to watch this game, you're going to have to buy that streaming. Yep. He said they're so greedy, they're going to have, make you either get them all or oh. jump around all over all the oh. time. Oh, they'll put a network show on at 1 o'clock, yep. another one at 4.30, and another one at 8.30. That's your choice. Yeah. It's nationwide. And that's it. And if you want your home... you got to buy a streaming that's service. Right. That's right. And he says, as greedy as these NFL and MLB, and they are, they're looking to do it. You know, they're going to keep on milking that cow until they yank the others off. Yeah. And oh, then yeah. they'll backtrack. Yeah. Oh, all right, we went too far. But... You know, well, what's the cardinal word of marketing? All right, you establish the price, you keep on driving it up until you hit resistance. Yeah, and then you back, and then you back slightly off, off and yep. you, you found your, your maximum point. That's it. Yeah. yeah and I, that's I, what they're doing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, there's no question about it. Yeah. You know, we're already paying $15 a month sport access fee on, exactly. on our cable system. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, however... You, um, it would be boring to talk about it, probably, but there are a couple of things we can do. Um, you have Comcast? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I talked to Comcast uh, up in Bellingham. And uh, so I talked to a very nice young man. Mm -hmm. So he says, what can I do for you? He says, let's sit down. And they have little uh, areas where you can sit. Yeah, they do over in little little tables. Mansfield there too. Yeah. And I said, well, I'm paying too bloody much money for Comcast. Uh, and my sister has Verizon next door. And accidentally, we got talking. She was watching something on her cable, and I said. What station is that? She said, well, I have Verizon. I said, oh, oh, because <laughs> we don't have that um, on uh, Comcast. And she said, no, it's, it's on Verizon. I said, really? I said, look, can I look at your scoreboard here or what you got? And finally, I said, now, how much does all this go? Less than I'm paying. Yeah, I'm Mine's outrageous, and I don't have any any uh, extra yeah. services on yeah. it. So I, I I said that to the kid, and he said, "Okay, Mr. Crane, let's." Uh... Okay, whoa! He said, "You have been a Comcast customer since 1985." I said, "Yeah, when you guys wired the town and off." So I bet I was. Uh, yeah, I couldn't wait for him to get to my street. He said, I'm going to give you a phone number. He said, now, when we have people like you come in, we have, I can give you maybe maybe 10% off mm -hmm. without asking anybody, okay? But he said, these people at this phone number I'm going to give you are charged with making sure you do not leave. Customer retention, yeah. Yeah, customer retention line. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have the number, and I got to call them. And uh, so he said they have access to much deeper discounts than we do. And he says, with you, you've been with us going on 50 years? Yeah. 
Well, not quite 50. Uh, let's see. 15 plus 24 is 39. Yeah, we've been in the house 40, I don't know, 43 or 44 yeah. years. We were them shortly thereafter. Comcast came on, that come in the street, come down the street. And I, he said, you've never left us. So he said, I'll guarantee you they will mm -hmm. make you happy. Yeah. I, Make Susie happy. I don't. I don't pay the bills. I do. <laughs> I write the damn checks, and I know exactly what's every month is. It was happening. Um. I. Well, okay. I have a question. Go ahead. Here. Let's have it. Have you seen this ad? No. It's a exhibition. It says 700 artifacts of humanity that humanity needs to see opens March 15th at the castle at Park Plaza. Okay, and it, it's one of the sponsors. The sponsors are uh, local, our local media partners, the Boston Globe, BUR, WCVB, which is Channel 5, and GBH. Okay. Now, so I, I went online to just see what, what this outfit was. That cost thirty-four dollars and ninety-five cents to go to, starting at. Also on that page is a big thing about Ticketmaster. How uh, the tickets are probably going to be hard to get, and they keep telling you, "Hurry, ex sellouts expected down here," which means, and Comcast has got a whole bunch of rules of why they can charge what they do and their fees and stuff. So you know. You're not getting any thirty-four ninety-five ticket. Now, I would like to know who the hell gets the money for this. Who is making money off of the Holocaust? There's a fundraiser uh -huh. that has gone to the governing body of the Auschwitz camp and said, "If you will work with us, we will cut you half the profits." They're, it's nationwide. They're going across the country with this yeah. thing, and it's it's it, the comp company that's doing this is M U S E E L I A Muslia, presented by Neon W W E. I'm sure that's not World Wildlife Federation or expert. Um, but you talk about exploitive. You're seeing somebody's. Clothes there, you know damn well they got gassed. Of course, and you're appealing to these. I could see you doing this for free to sit or to ed for educational purposes, or to cover the expenses. Bringing busloads of kids. Exactly in. five. Now I went to what not Auschwitz. I went at one time years and years ago in Las Vegas. We went to a a, a Titanic. Exhibition, and you know, I stood there and we looked at stuff, and it was like shoes, kids' clothes, dishes, dishes. Yeah, this dishes. Uh, but I looked and I said to Mike, I said, you know, somebody probably died there, and here we are paying somebody to make money off somebody else's misfortune and death. That's exactly what they're doing here, under the guise of oh. Not long ago, not far away. If you're, you were so damn concerned about it, why are you charging thirty four ninety five to get in? Plus, plus, it's going to go. That's starting at the thing that is bothersome. Something like this done right would be a marvelous thing for high school kids. Be a great teaching, and maybe yep. seventh and eighth grade. Exactly, but precisely have. A program of educating the kids for a like couple of days mm -hmm. of intensive stuff about what went on in Nazi Germany. That's that's precisely right. And what went right. on with these death camps, uh, and then take them and throw them in Walter Holmes's buses, bring them in. Yep, exactly. And, and have them see it. But to make it camp. into a money-making proposition by some company, 
It's disgusting. If they said, all right, uh, for organizations, we're going to charge you 300 bucks. Yeah. Okay, because we have to cover our expenses. Fine. I, I wouldn't argue with that at all. But no. thirty four ninety five, and oh, it's going to be through Ticketmaster, which means they are going, going to make, make a lot of money on it. On you it bet you. Too. I mean, instead of the twenty percent, they're going to be getting uh, seventy five or a hundred. Right here, they tell you sellouts expected. Even the website says, "Hurry, there's nothing left." Yeah. Um, telling you that you're going to pay it through the nose. Uh, that that mm. uh, by the way, a quick little quick hitter. Lowe's experienced a seventeen percent drop in quarterly sales. Oh yeah, yeah, I can, yeah. But had an increase in profits. Okay. Yeah, this is a well-run company. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, uh, take, take a hit of seventeen percent, mm -hmm. but yet make the changes necessary to keep the profit spread. One of the reasons that you see this converse relationship, too, Bill, is that a lot of the decrease in sales is coming through contractor sales. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many fewer housing starts this year than the last year, which was more than that, and it, the mm -hmm. housing starts going down. Contractor sales goes down, your lumber sales go down, your plumbing sales, everything goes down, and they work on a smaller margin yep. with a contractor sure. than they do you and I walking in buying mm -hmm. a two by four. Yeah. So, you know, their, their volume sales goes down, the profit structure goes up. By the way, uh, you think we get a 10% discount. Yeah. Uh, military. So they're taking 10% right off the top with mm -hmm. us. Yeah. And then throw in the contractors, just going to. So they get money in here. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. There's, um, I don't know what it is today. I don't think it changed the hell of a lot. But, you know, I used to work for Stanley. Mm. And we had a, I know the pricing, and I know the pricing structure, other mm. hardware-type country companies that I work for. And generally speaking, they, they minimums a third I was going to say thirty percent. Yeah, thirty. A third is usually standard, and some are fifty. Yeah. Oh well, those those are the guys that have a special situation. Well, they they can buy a big enough. I, yeah. Um, you, you take a Stanley tool at 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 one of the big box stores. Uh, they're buying it. They're they're if they're selling it for two dollars, they're buying it for a dollar. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Um. Okay, folks. Um. I believe that uh, we need to take a break. So, well, um, we will be back shortly. So this is a good time for you to get a cup of coffee or a little Jack Daniels or some popcorn or something. And oh. we'll be right back at you. Two of my favorite things. Yeah.